and uh, welcome to Mona's Rants, episode number one. I'm uh, your host, Mona Shake. I am very excited about these rants. You know, I used to do them, and then I got busy with life, and then I was like, you know what? What better time to start doing these rants than the quarantine and the pandemic and everything that's happening in the world uh, and the reckoning and the revolution that we are going through? Uh, why not? This is the time to do it. So I am very very excited. Uh, I am doing starting today a 30 day challenge, you guys 30 day challenge, I promise. Uh, so come like by July 8th, we have doing a 30 day challenge. I will put out a new rant every single day between 6 to 8pm Pacific time on a brand new topic. Yeah, and I'm gonna rant and I'm going to talk about this stuff, and I would love to hear your feedback, join in, ask questions, engage. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I love to do. I love to engage my audience. I love to know what you guys are thinking. Uh, so today's topic is, it's June 8th, and I don't know if you guys know, but today is National BFF Day. That's right. Do you have a BFF? If you don't, don't be sad. It's normal. It's totally normal to not have a BFF. This is a true story. And I was like, man, who the hell came up with Best Friends Day? Like, who's who's got that kind of time? Apparently, the U.S. Congress does. Yes. Uh, in 1935, U.S. Congress devoted today to close friends. Yeah, they're not even calling it a BFF. They were just like close friends, like good enough. Like, don't get too close. Like, close, but don't get, don't get too comfortable, right? So the close friend, they didn't even call it the BFF. But apparently, uh, then people were like, well, we'll just call it National BFF Day. So we are here at National BFF today, uh, Day today. Um, and uh, I uh, was looking up some of the facts about, you know, is it normal to have a BFF? Is it normal? Is it abnormal to not have a BFF? Like, what is that like? Uh, and I was looking it up. And I found out that 46% of Americans only have one best friend. 46%. That's kind of a, yeah, 46%. Uh, and uh, and uh, have one best friend. But, uh, and, but some people have more than one. Some people have three. Some people have five. Uh, and God bless you do. Uh, so, for instance, the survey from National Today also revealed some other interesting things about best friends. For example, 43% of the people surveyed say their significant other is their best friend. Okay, you know what? Can I just say something about that, though? Is your significant other really your best friend? Like, I know a lot of people talk about that. Like, oh, my my husband or my wife is, you know, my, my best friend. But it's just like, okay, do you tell them everything? Like, everything? Like, but... Not really. That's my dog eating something in the background. If you hear the munching happening, yeah, my dog is having the time of her life in the background. Uh, who is also one of my BFFs, actually. Uh, I don't know. I get a little weirded out about that when people are like, "I honestly wouldn't want my significant other to be my best friend because I'm not telling them everything." Okay, I'm telling them a lot of stuff, but there are some things that are just reserved for my. BFFs who are like outside of my significant other relationship. Like, I am not gonna go uh, and tell my BFF that, oh, I, you know, went to a meeting and came across this super hot guy. Like, that would be just weird. I don't know. That would be, I, and I guess the same would go for my significant other. I don't want them to come home and be like, yeah, you know, went to the business meeting today, super hot chick there, couldn't keep my eyes off of her. I mean, there's no, there's no harm in looking. There's no harm in looking whatsoever. However, there is harm in acting upon it. So that one, that 43% of people surveyed that their significant other is their best friend, uh, take it easy. 19% uh, say it's their dog. Yes, I am one of the 19% for sure. My dog is also happy to be one of my best friends. Don't judge me. Okay, I know some of you people are listening and you're just like, oh my God, your best, your dog is your best friend. Yeah, yeah, my dog is also my best friend. Yeah, you can sit there and judge me behind your screens all you want while sitting on the toilet doing whatever you're doing. But I'm telling you, one of my best friends is my dog for sure. Uh, and another 19% say it's their mom. That's nice. I can see that. That's like, as a matter of fact, I'm shocked. That it's only 19%. I thought it would be something like 50% or like 48% of people are like, 
yeah, my best friend's my mom. But then again, I've come across a lot of guys who have major mommy issues. So so that's that on that. Uh, uh, quite frankly, I'm not even best friends with my mom, so I can't even judge those poor guys. Uh, 26% of men and women say they met their best friend in elementary school. That's so sweet. Elementary school. That's like, oh, those are like lifetime long friendships. Uh, I have friendships that I've met. I met friends in elementary school um, that I'm kind of still friends with, but because I grew up in Pakistan and then moved out here when I was 15, um, I kind of lost touch with them because mainly just living in two different time zones, two living in two different countries, also living two very different lifestyles. You kind of, I guess, grow out of those relationships. 25% say it was high school, which makes total sense. And 19% say it was middle school, which is, also makes sense. Uh, I would I would think that as you get older, like 25%, you would be a little bit more mature. You know a little bit more about yourself. You know about your likes and your dislikes versus when you're a lot younger. 25% of the folks surveyed believe you can only really have one best friend. You judgmental fuckers. 25%? Really? You can, you can only really have one best friend? I really don't believe that. I have tons of very close friends. I wouldn't say tons, but I have at least four like solid like inner circle close friends that I go and talk to about like deep stuff and they all they all you know are are just kind of like they serve like different things they're they're like different people like in the sense that the first person is you know like I would go to a girlfriend and be like girl I was going out with this guy uh you know I'm having boy issues and I want to go talk to uh I you know I'll go talk to girlfriend X, I'm not going to tell her name. Uh, and I'd be like, Oh my God, I was going out with this guy. Uh, you know, I, which is true. I was recently going out with a guy. Uh, it didn't quite work out, uh, mainly because he has a lot of mommy issues. Okay. There it is. Let's just say it's safe to say he is not best friends with his mother. Okay. Um, and not, no judgment on this, but listen, uh, gentlemen, if you have issues with your mother and you go on a date with a girl on a first date, whether it's a FaceTime date, or like an in-person date, don't start talking about your shitty relationship with your mother. Please, please. This is a tip from a single girl. Please don't do that. Don't start just vomiting. Just start telling the guy, the girl, oh, I, I hate my mom. I went out, I, I was doing a FaceTime date with this guy and he straight away, like he didn't even hesitate. He straight away just told me, he was like, oh, yeah. I was like, you know, what's going on with the pandemic? Is your family, clo- you know, here? Are you, did you talk to them? And he was like, yeah, I don't really talk to my mom. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I was like, he was, he was like, yeah, I have a complex relationship with her. She has a lot of emotional problems. I don't really want, you know, I don't really like to talk to her. He goes, quite frankly, if she just died tomorrow, I really won't care. What? What? Don't say that. Don't say that to a girl. Because. I was inside, I was like, run, Mona, run! This guy has massive mommy issues. Like, those mommy issues, I'm not saying that people with mommy issues don't get to resolve their mommy issues. I'm sure they do, please. But this person was just so unaware of the comment that they made. They didn't even see my facial reaction. I was just like, oh my God, okay, what? Like, that's how you think about your mom? Like, I was like, and my response to him was, have you considered therapy? Um... And he didn't even catch that. And I was like, all right, good talk. I'm going to go now uh, because uh, I don't want to be a rehab center for you. Okay, good talk. Um, Sorry, sidetrack about that. But please, gentlemen, you don't need to. You seriously don't need to tell the girl that you hate your mother and you wish she was dead. Leave it alone. Get to know her a little bit. You're going to freak her the fuck out. Seriously, you're going to freak her the fuck out. Just... Just keep quiet. If you don't like, if you don't like talking to your mother, or you haven't don't have a good relationship with your mom, just be like, you know what? Um, no, I haven't seen my mom, but you know, I'm sure she's okay. I'm gonna check up on her and change the topic, okay? Uh, because this isn't about your, our parents. Uh, this is about us, uh, and we are here to get to know each other. So that's a little side note. But anyways, um, I have a best friend. Uh, he is wonderful. He is uh uh. You know, uh, he is a uh, Latino. Uh, I am not Latina, but uh, he is a Latino, and I love him to pieces. Um, how did we? How did I meet my best friend? Okay, so one of the things I would love for you guys to do is in the comment boxes, 
tell me how did you meet your best friend? Like, do, A, do you have a best friend? And B, how did you meet your best friend? I would love to hear that uh, because those stories always fascinate me and I love those stories. Uh, so my, I met my uh, best friend uh, that I have currently now uh, as an adult that I, you know, I, I guess in my 30s that I met him. Um, we met because I had a small documentary that was done on me about two years ago. Um, and it was being showcased uh, at this pack theater in Hollywood. It was amazing uh, by this organization called Arula, which is Artists Rise Up Los Angeles. And they did this, uh, you know, and they they wanted to showcase my my documentary. Um, and after the documentary was aired, uh, one of the organizers, one of the producers there, uh, I met, and his name was Enrico. So Enrico walked up to me. We started talking. Uh, and then he was like, oh, my God, you know, I have we have a live show. You should come and do a live show. And I was like, oh, yeah, totally love to. Uh, I went and did the live show. He interviewed me after the show. And we've literally been friends ever since. Like, we have not stopped talking to each other. Um, right now, got sadly, because due to, due to the pandemic, he lives a little far away from me. We don't really get to see each other. But he is awesome. Like, I, I love having a best friend. I, I really do. I think best friends are, are gems. And uh, they are... Uh, you know, I mean, there's all this talk about, like, if you have a best friend, uh, best friends, you know, or even having close friends, they help reduce your blood pressure. Having best friends, uh, you know, lo- increases your self-esteem. Having best best friends also helps you, uh, you know, just kind of, I guess, help you become a better person, I think, because there's always someone to be like, okay, you're now you're turning into a fucking freak. Like, now you're being a weirdo. Like, don't be a weirdo. And I think that's what good friends do. Good friends check you. They're just like, okay, no, are you really going to wear that shirt? Don't wear that shirt outside. Like, seriously. I've had friends who are just like, okay, Mona, no, don't do that. Or Mona, like, don't really wear those pants. Or Mona, oh, my God, you're dating that guy? Really? Is your self-esteem this low? And I'm like, oh, shit, my self-esteem is this low. Like, what the fuck? And I think that's what that's what good friends do. That's what close friends do. Uh, they tell you not to go date losers uh, or not to wear horrible clothing or when your makeup's all smudged or when your penny line's showing or um, uh, or if you uh, if you put up a bad picture of yourself and they're like, okay, you need to take that picture down that does not show your best assets. Best friends. National Best Friends Day, you guys. June 8th. Today is the day. I... Uh, I actually, uh, so that's my friend uh, Enrico that I had my as, as my best friend. But uh, this is a true story. I uh, dated this guy about two and a half years ago. Um, and a uh, very handsome guy. Uh, you know, we met online. We started dating. I really wasn't interested in him that much because I thought he was a little boring. Uh, but he kept pursuing me. And I was like, you know what? Maybe something's wrong with me. I should I should pursue this guy. Like, he's a, he sounds like a really nice guy. He's very gentlemanly, very sweet. Uh, And we started dating. Yeah. And then something in my gut was like, something's wrong about this guy. There's something a little off about this gentleman right here. Um, Yeah. And uh, we went out for like about, I would say about three or four months or something like that. No, probably less than that. Less than three months. Um, And uh, every time I would talk, I'm like, you know, um, I went to his place. He had a really nice dog. His dog was very sweet, but his dog was just like spoiled. Like he spoiled the crap out of his dog. And he would always be like, my dog's my best friend. And I'm like, oh yeah, totally. My dog's my best friend too. <laughs> uh, but I'm also thinking, well, but I'll also have a human best friend. My dog is also my best friend, but I also have a human friend, best friend. Uh, yeah, that wasn't the case for uh, this gentleman. He, uh, did not, I asked him one day, I was like, hey, so this job that you work at, so like, do you have a lot of friends there? He goes, yeah, no, I, I don't make friends with people I work with. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, like, what do you mean by that? He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't make friends with people I work with. I was like, but isn't that like just an automatic process of just becoming friends with people like that you, that you meet, like you work with, like you work with these people day in and day out. Don't you just become friends? I mean, I have, I have a lot of Ex, you know, jobs that I've had in the past, I've become really good friends and I keep in touch with them to this day. So uh, I was like, don't you have friends like that? And he was like, no. And one day he straight out told me he doesn't believe in friends. He doesn't believe in the need for having friends. Whoa. 
I was like, you don't, you don't feel the need to have a friend or just like a friend. He's like, no, I don't, I don't feel the need for friends in general. Forget about a best friend, just friends, like human friends. No, you know, he's like, no. So I'm like, so was your ex, was she your best friend? He was like, no, she was like my friend. She was my best friend. I'm like, have you ever had a human best friend? And he was like, no, he's like, I'd never believed in having human friends or best friend for that matter. Okay. All right. So that's, that's positive. Um, yeah, that's not creepy at all. Um, and then, uh, something very strange happened. Stranger than this guy revealing to me that he doesn't have, uh, friends or best friends. Uh, you know what, for the sake of the story, we'll call him Aurelio because that was his real name. Yes. That was his real name, Aurelio. Um, and then he decided that he wants to take me to Vegas for my birthday. Now, I had never once asked him to take me to Vegas. I did not show any interest in any such thing. But he insisted that he wants to take me to Vegas for my birthday. So I was like, okay, sweet, cool. We'll go to Vegas. We drive to Vegas. And we check into the MGM Grand, which is very nice of him. That's the hotel he got for us. Uh, and then he said, hey, you know, we're going to go see Cirque du Soleil in Vegas. I was like, oh, that's very nice for my birthday. I was like, all right. And we get there. Um, and he got into some dumb arguing, argument with me about show business. Now, mind you, this guy works in computers. Yes. He works in IT. Imagine me showing up to an IT guy's job and be like, <laughs> no, no, no. You're doing that incorrectly. Let me let me show you how you do that. That would be really fucking weird. Why? Because I'm not a fucking IT person, okay? I know nothing about this IT world. All I know about IT is turn it on, turn it off. It doesn't work. Shut the windows off and turn on a new browser. That's it. That's my entire knowledge of IT, Okay. I know nothing besides that. Maybe I can connect to a Wi-Fi if I'm lucky on a good day, okay? This guy sat there. We had just gotten to Vegas, started arguing with me about the business of show business, okay? And uh, just got into some dumb argument. I don't even remember the argument because it was so freaking stupid. Um, and then I was like, all right, dude, I'm not going to argue with you because I'm like beating my head against the wall. Uh, let's just drop it. Okay. We go out to dinner. Um, and we come back and then I fall asleep because I'm like, I don't want to talk to Mr. Psycho because I don't want to, uh, die in my sleep. Uh, so the next day I wake up and I go into the shower. This is the best part, you guys. This is the best part. I go into the shower. I come out. I'm, I come outside the shower. I have my my, my towel wrapped up around me and right behind there's a, there's a wall that has the mirror with the, with the sink and everything. And right behind it is the room where, you know, the bed is and everything. And as I'm standing and I'm like, I come out of the shower, I'm like about to brush my teeth. I hear him talking to someone. So I'm thinking he's probably talking on the phone. So you would think, I don't know. That's not what he was doing. Then all of a sudden, I heard another voice. It wasn't somebody else. It was him. Yes, that's right. He was talking to himself in two different voices. Mm Mm-hmm. He's schizophrenic. Not that there's anything wrong with being schizophrenic. But let a girl know up front what's going on in your head. So then I can make the decision if I want to go out with you or not. (laughs) Okay. All of a sudden, this is what I hear, you guys. True story. All I hear is, first he's like, but I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And the next voice is like, but you have to do it. You have to do it. And I am literally standing there with like chills down my spine. And I'm like, this guy is going to freaking murder me tonight. Like, I think right now, him and his two voices are planning where they're going to bury my body outside of Vegas. Okay, I think that's exactly what these two voices are having a roundtable conference in this moment to figure out 
where they're going to kill me, how they're going to kill me and where they're going to bury my body. And listen, my family and friends, they're busy. I don't think they have the time to come out and try to dig up my body outside of Vegas. Like they just don't have the time. I know they love me, but they're like, I got to go pick up my kids. And I'm like, I understand that I'm not even hurt by it. But that's what this guy was doing. Having a full blown conversation with himself in two different voices. So I'm standing by the door. The door is right there. And I'm like, I can either run out the freaking door right now and scream and ask for help or ask him what the fuck is going on. (laughs) So Mona, because Mona is also a little cuckoo, decided to ask him what was going on. So I was, I, I processed it that way. I was like, uh, this way, right? I was just like, if I run out right now and my towel falls to the ground, I'm going to be legit just shrieking like down the MGM Grand like hotel hallway asking people to save me, which isn't a, exactly an attractive look, you know? I think if it was in Los Angeles, I'd probably get a career out of it of some kind. Vegas... Not really. Everybody's showing ass and titties. It's not a big deal, right? As a matter of fact, people might look at me and be like, Miss, put that away. We don't need to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we have better over here. Please put that. Please put those put those uh, sagging titties away. Thank you very much. So I was like, all right, I'm going to ask him what's going on. And I was like, hey, um, Aurelio. And then all of a sudden I hear this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Aurelio, who are you talking to? And he's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, Aurelio, who are you talking to? And he's like, I'm talking to myself. And I was like, well, cut it out because you're scaring the crap out of me. Okay. And then he got all quiet. And I was like, God help me. If he has a weapon in his hand right now, that he's going to either stab me to death or he's going to shoot me. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to find out. That I was willing to take a chance of getting stabbed or shot, then running down the hallway and showing my ass to the world. Do you understand the logic in that? I think so many people would be like, you know what? Let me run down the hallway and expose my ass and titties. But not this girl. This girl's like, I'd rather get shot than show my ass to the world. You know how sad that is? It's really fucking sad. So I go into the room and he's literally sitting there like this. Like I've punished a two-year-old sitting in a corner. Like I gave him a fucking timeout or something. I was like, I didn't give you a timeout. You're an adult. Uh, So I'm just like, hey, are you okay? And he's like, I'm like, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm I'm fine. And the entire time I was thinking, I was like, don't piss him off, Mona. Mona. Don't piss him off. He's going to kill you in your sleep tonight. Sleep with your one eye open. Maybe get like a baseball bat. Maybe get some kind of weapon. Maybe get a butter knife. Maybe get one of those plastic knives that if he tries to kill you, you can maybe like stab him in the eye or something and then just start screaming and just run out the door. You know, I'm thinking all these crazy scenarios. I'm like, oh, what if I go downstairs and try to steal like a steak knife? So maybe I should ask him to take me to a steakhouse so I can steal a steak knife so I can sleep properly tonight so he doesn't murder me in my sleep. This is how I think, people. I always think the worst. That's how my brain works, okay? We go out to din- we go out to Cirque du Soleil that day. It was a very strange birthday, to say the least. We go to Cirque du Soleil. Uh, we sit down. We start watching Cirque du Soleil. Uh, it's a really good Cirque du Soleil. I forget which one it was. Um, and then, now... As a normal person, gentlemen, let me speak to the gentlemen of my crowd over here. If you are taking your girl out for her birthday, if you're taking her out to uh, to see a show, you took her out to Vegas, wouldn't you also plan a dinner for her actual birthday? Like, isn't doesn't that all go hand in hand? Or am I missing something here? Or are you just going to throw her a slice of pizza and be like, happy birthday, bitch? Like, you're not going to do that. You're not going to be like, yo, let me put one candle on the slice of fucking pizza. Here you go. Happy birthday. Okay? No, nobody's doing that shit. I'm going to be like, no, I'm going to plan out like a proper dinner. That's what I would do if I was, you know, uh, if it was his birthday, I would plan that out. But thank God I was celebrating his birthday because I didn't know which Aurelia was going to show up, uh, which personality was going to show up that day. 
uh, and I wasn't going to take a chance of getting stabbed. Uh, so then uh, the, or the, the, the Cirque du Soleil ends, and I'm like, hey, so where are we going to dinner? And he goes, oh, you want dinner? I was like, wait, what? Isn't that part of, like, celebrating birthday, like, having dinner? And he's like, oh, well, maybe we could just go have pizza. I swear to God he said that. He was like, maybe have pizza. I was like, no, we're not having pizza. We're going to go sit at this Italian restaurant, and I will pay the bill. He's like, no, 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 it's your birthday. I'm like, ta da ta I don't want to get stabbed tonight. I don't want to argue. I will pay for the Italian meal. If the Italian meal means that you're going to let me live tonight and not stab me to death, I will pay for the Italian meal. We sat down. We had the Italian meal. They didn't have the steak knife, you guys. They didn't because it's not a freaking steakhouse. Okay. They just didn't have it. I, I asked. Trust me. And it would be awkward, right? Hi, can I have a steak dinner? Ma'am, you're having penne pasta. Oh, I know. I know, I'm, I'm aware of the penne pasta. <laughs> Can I still have the steak knife, though? I need the steak knife. I can't do that. That's that's A, it's going to set him off to be like, woo, 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 and be legit just creepy. That's just creepy. I'm not going to do that. So I took a chance. I was like, I'm just going to wait till I had, like, a plastic knife or something in my hotel room. Uh, we got done with the dinner. I did end up picking up the tab. That's a true story. Um, for my own birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mona. Happy birthday for all the, yeah, that's just the way to celebrate a birthday. Go out with a guy and then he sticks you with the bill. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I mean, I mean, let me tell you something. That's one thing is all his personalities agreed on that this bitch was going to pick up the, the dinner tab on her own birthday. Yeah. Good job. Way to, way to make the panties drop. Good job, sir. Um, we go back. Thank God we don't, I'm just like, I'm just playing it cool. I'm like, yeah, whatever you want, man, whatever, whatever you say, it's good. You're good. I'm good. Just don't fucking stab me or just don't kill me in my sleep. Cause he was a big guy. I was like, oh, yo, all you have to do is just like sit on me and choke me. I'm like, it's over for me. It's over. Okay. These are kind of chances we take gentlemen when we go out with you. When women say, oh, we love a muscular man. Yeah. That's also a fucking chance because I don't know if he's a fucking psychopath who's going to try to kill me in my sleep. Okay. So I wake up the next day and I cannot wait to get back to LA. I'm like, and we took my car because <laughs> he's a gentleman. Uh, we took my car, paid my, my gas, my miles. I'm like, totally fine. Not a problem. We, I'm like driving like a maniac. I'm doing hundred, hundred miles per hour. I don't give a fuck. Give me a fucking speeding ticket. Get me the fuck out of here. I don't want to be next to this guy. Uh, I drop him off to his uh, to his uh, basement apartment that he lived in, uh, and I come back. Uh, and then I was I waited an hour, and then I sent him a text, and I was like, "Hey, thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate you, but I don't think this is gonna work out." I know some of you guys are like, "Mona, that's cold. He took you to Vegas for your birthday." I know he did, but he all I also took a chance of him murdering me if one of his schizophrenic personalities was going to come out and possibly kill me. Okay. Not schizophrenic, but one of his personalities was just going to come out and murder me. And I wasn't going to take the chance. I was just like deuces. And then after that, I was pretty scared. I was like, is this guy going to come out and try to hurt me? And thank God he didn't. Um, and uh, thank God, I hope I'm not jinxing myself, but that's the story. Uh, the, 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 the moral of the story, the moral of the story is you guys have a friend. So they tell you, yo, Aurelio, you're being fucking stupid. You're being fucking creepy. You have two different voices. Go to therapy. Take some medication. Help yourself out. You're going to creep some chick out that you're going to date. You're gonna, then you're going to take her to Vegas and she's going to get an argue with, argument with you. And, and, then you're, and then she's thinking the entire time that you're going to try to murder her. Don't do that. Get a friend. Just a friend. Guys like that, get a friend. Gentlemen, this is a PSA. If a girl asks you, do you have friends? Do you have any friends? And you say no, we are going to fucking run as fast as we can. Because that shit is creepy. You know who doesn't have friends? Serial killers. Yeah. They don't need that kind of shit. They don't need that kind of pressure. Okay? Because friends ask questions. Hey, what did you do today? Oh, I don't know. (laughs) You know, kidnapped a chick today and... uh, killed her, and then had sex with her in a cemetery? What are you going to tell them? Can't say that kind of shit. That's why you need friends. You need good friends 
who are going to be like, all right, dude, first of all, that's really fucked up. And second, I got to fucking report you. You fucking killed somebody. And the next thing you know, the best friend's dying too. This is why, friends, you need friends, okay? So you're not creepy. And if you're going fucking out of your mind or you have psychopathic tendencies or you have serial killer tendencies, there's somebody to check you. Or at least if they're not checking you, at least they're helping save lives, okay? Get a friend. I don't think this PSA could be any more clear about this is a this is an anti serial killer PSA. Get a friend, best friend, close friend, any kind of friend. Get a fucking friend. I hope he gets a friend because it's creepy as shit. Um, speaking of creepy friends, I had a friend. Uh, she was great. You know what happens? I think as people, as we evolve as humans, right? As we get older, I think what happens is that we begin to learn things about ourselves that we didn't know before. We begin to accept things about ourselves that we didn't know before. Um, by the way, I would love to, oh, I would love to, oh, the, I see some of the comments here. Let's read some of the comments. Smack those thumbs up, people. Oh, here we go. Just so I remember, we'll try to watch every day. Thanks, James. Any chance of enabling Super Chat? Uh, I probably can. I am uh, not good at this stuff, but I will probably do it, James. But thank you for asking. Yes, I did hear about Super Chat, and I am going to enable it tomorrow. Promise. Hi, Elizabeth. I do have a BFF. Yes, good job, Elizabeth. Tim, do you have a BFF? And James, what about you? Do you have a BFF or a close friend? Don't be like Aurelio. Please, gentlemen, please don't do that. It's creepy. It's creepy as hell. Um, I used to have a best friend when I got to Los Angeles. We met, we immediately connected. We were like, oh, you are my soul sister. Where have you been? Um, and I think when I met this person, I was still very young uh, and I didn't really know a lot of stuff about myself. Uh, and I didn't realize until much later that this person was sabotaging me and sabotaging my relationships. Yeah, yeah. You're looking at a very uh, naive person who used to be very naive. Um, I'm going to have a drink, you guys. What are you guys drinking? This person. Let me tell you something about this person. Okay. This person is 12 years older than me. So I thought, wow, I'm really going to learn from this person. There's a maturity level. Oh, coffee. Hey, good job, Tim. Good job. There's a maturity level to this person. I'm going to learn something. I'm going to grow as a person. Nah, nah. I was the smarter one in that friendship. I was the mature one in that friendship. Okay? You know when you meet somebody uh, and you really connect with them, you're like, oh, my God, I just connect with this person. This person's so cool. You know, we, we like, get each other. She's so sweet. She's awesome. Oh, what's going on with my hair here? Um, this person is awesome. They get me. I get them. It's great. And then as you begin to get older, you're just like, every time I hang out with this person, this person is shit faced. Like they're drunk or they're high. There's always something under the influence this person is. But then you're like, oh God, come on, stop it. Then you start denying it to yourself. You're like, stop it. Start, stop denying all those red flags. You're like, oh, no, this person's a good person. My best friend. God, I can't think of this person like that. It's my best friend. So she gets a little high every time I see her. So she's a little drunk every time I see her. Ah, she's having a good time. Every fucking time you hang out. Uh, this person also tries to bring you into their world of uh, drug usage and their usage of alcohol. And then, you know, you drink a little bit. I'm not much of a drinker. Uh, not that it's a religious thing or not that I'm better than anybody. I just didn't grow up drinking. I also think drinking ages you. Um, I think a lot of people think I'm a lot younger than what I act, my actual age. And I think mainly it's because of the fact that I didn't drink early on. And it helped me restore my face a little bit. But that's just me. I'm just not a big fan. I don't need to drink to have fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, it's about the company. If I have really good company, I'm having a good time. But this person was always under the influence every single time, every time. Um, not just that. I would be dating a guy 
and I would bring the guy around. And this person would go walk up to that guy and start asking them provocative questions. So for instance, I was once dating this guy and she walked up to this guy person and said, so are you guys hooking up already? Are you guys having sex yet? First of all, what the fuck kind of question is that? Second, as my bestie, why would you ever make a comment like that? That's an outrageous comment. I would never say that to a guy you're dating. I would just never say that. That's just so disrespectful. Like, would you? Would you ever say that? Like, have you ever done that? I don't know. Please post it in the comment box. Have you ever, like, a guy or a girl your best friend is dating or your close friend's dating and just walked up to him and be like, hey, so you're hooking up? You're banging her? Huh? Huh? You're getting it in? What's up? No, nobody fucking talks like that. It's ridiculous. And I didn't know that that's the kind of shit she was doing because the guy that was seeing would quietly part ways from me and would just not say anything. And I was just like, hmm, that's very strange. Everything was good. But then I don't know what happened. I don't know. She talked to them and then this person just kind of stopped talking to me. So I don't know what happened because you know what they say? Tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Yeah. So I was subconsciously telling these guys, I'm also a drug addict and an alcoholic. And that's what I was telling them. But I didn't know that. And the sad part is that I wasn't dealing in either drugs nor alcohol, which is very sad. Uh, This person continued, continued to do this in my life. They were a pretty destructive force. And every time you talk to this person, they either didn't have money they always had uh, drama, even either with their own child or they had a drama with their ex or with a current guy they were dating. Uh, they always had some kind of uh, issue going on, on where their car was getting towed or, uh, you know, their, uh, you know, their life was falling apart or uh, one night this person even spent a night in jail. Yeah, this is a true story. I'm not even going to mention this person's name because I'm just not. Um they spent a night in jail and I had to go and pick this person up from jail. Okay. This is a very troubled person. But I think when you're young and when you're naive, you're just like, ah, oh, that's just my friend. This is just my friend. It's no problem. It's totally normal. It's normal. It's normal to, you know, uh, get into a fight with your ex and then they bust your face open and then you end up spending a night in jail. Totally normal. Nothing to see here, people. Yeah. That's what I was doing. I was legit just accepting their shitty, crappy behavior at all times because they were my best friend. I think that's, somebody asked me once, Mona, what is your greatest strength? And I was like, loyalty. I'll be loyal to you till the death. Like, you're good to me. I'll be loyal to you till the death. And then they're like, what's your weakness? I'm like, loyalty. Loyalty is my weakness because... If I have made a promise to you, and if I have told you that you are my best friend, then I will follow you to the end of the earth. Don't do that, folks. Don't do that. I'm trying to look for a new weakness. I probably have a few, but that is not a good weakness to have. Loyalty, that you're going to walk somebody, if they're walking off the fucking cliff and then you're going to walk off the cliff with them. Yeah, that's this chick right here. At least I used to be. I'm working on not being that person anymore. This person has... Uh, this person is like, uh, if you give them, uh, 90% of yourself, this person gives you back, uh, maybe a 10%, you know, uh, and that's what low self-esteem does children. If you have low self-esteem, these are the kind of people you invite in your life. Hooray. Um, except this person for a very, very long time for their garbage behavior, for their shitty behavior, be there to bail them out, be there to help them out, be there to financially help them out. Um, this person ended up filing for bankruptcy uh, and got ended up getting their car uh, basically repossessed by the bank. Uh, and then I had to rush on a Sunday morning uh, because this person called me and told me that their car was stolen. And I'm like rushing like a maniac uh, all the way from West Hollywood, all the way to the West Side. Uh, and only to go to the police station to find out that this person's car was possessed, repossessed by the bank. Good job. Good job on reading the fine print there. Um, this person, uh, again, went to the, went to jail. I was there to go and pick them up. Uh, this person uh, would get into these massive fights with their ex. 
I would be there for them. But whenever I would call them about anything that I wanted or I needed, uh, this person would be like, oh, get over it. I'll figure it out. Oh, you're always whining and complaining. Uh, and uh, I would just take it as, oh, my God, you know what? Maybe she's right. I just need to, you know, get over it and just not talk about it to her. But then what the fuck are best friends for? If I can come and vent to you, then what are best friends for? Uh, and the straw that broke the camel's back, you guys, was us going to um, a very uh, a very fun trip overseas for a friend's wedding. And this person, this was an all-inclusive resort. Have you been to an all-inclusive resort where all the alcohol is included? Now, that is like an alcoholic's paradise, okay? If you have a slight, if you have a drinking problem and you, first of all, have a hard time even accepting the fact that you have fact that you have a drinking problem, um, it's like an alcoholic's paradise. Show up and get drunk with us. We will waste your liver. Uh, I think that's the way they should uh, market themselves because, uh, yeah, I show up uh, the moment we get on the plane to get there. So first of all, this person didn't have enough money to get to the destination. Let me repeat that. This person did not have the money to attend the wedding. So then I, as the loyal best friend, forked out the money, not just for them to go travel internationally, but I also forked out the money because their car was possessed. And I forked out three months worth of credit card debt so they can have a car. Yes, you're looking at a dumb, loyal friend. Okay. Um, this person shows up with a massive attitude uh, on the day of the trip. We get to the destination and the moment we get there, this person drops their bags in the room that we were sharing, heads over to the bar. I go to the bar and this person has, I shit you not, three drinks or four drinks at a time. They're like literally lifting them up and then just carrying them around, uh, like just just holding them across their titties and just like carrying the drinks around uh, as if they are their newborn children. Um, yeah. The entire trip, this person was shit-faced, you guys. The entire trip. I'm not kidding. I couldn't find this person. You know what their reputation was? I had to go and make a new friend at the wedding. So because I didn't have, because a lot of these people were new, I didn't know them. And I had to go find a new friend to spend time at the wedding. For a destination wedding. For her that I fucking paid for. And this is the kind of reaction I'm getting. This person is gone. This person's gone from like 9 p.m. till 5 in the morning. Nobody fucking knows where she is. She's passed out. Every time you look at this person, this person's passed out on a couch somewhere. And then after a while, her reputation, we were there for about four days, four or five days. And the reputation was, oh, where is this so-and-so person? They're like, oh, she probably passed out on some couch. Imagine that. Imagine Spending somewhere like four days and everybody very quickly knows you're an alcoholic except for yourself. That's pretty sad. That's pretty fucking sad. Finally, the trip ended. Thank God for that. We come back. Um, I had to have a neck surgery, which I think I've talked about in the past. They had to cut me open and put a metal disc in my neck. So, yeah. So, I come back from this international trip and literally... Three hours after that, my arrival, I had to have a neck surgery. So I was just like partying it to the max. And then I got here and I was like, cut me open, people. Let's do this. Let's put a metal disc in here. This person didn't even come and drop me off at the hospital destination. I had to ask another friend to help me out. And since my surgery... That person only visited me. This is my bestie I'm talking about. Only visited me once. Once after my neck surgery. This is my best friend. I have other close friends who were there, like, bringing me meals, checking up on me, taking walks, uh, like, getting me medication, getting me food. My bestie visited me once and barely called to check up on me. Moral of the story, guys, there's a lot of morals in the stories today, okay? 
a lot of morals of the story. The moral of the story is don't get shitty best friends. Get good people in your life. Good best friends who give a fuck about you, who care about you, you know, who are, uh, don't excuse their bad behavior. I think when you excuse bad behavior of people in friendships, you also excuse bad behaviors of people in personal relationships because, you know, people are shitty. If people are shitty, they're shitty. It doesn't matter what relationship they are. Fucking cut them out. Like, just get rid of them. Uh, And thank God, uh, after that, we spoke for a little and we just stopped talking to each other. And it has been the single greatest blessing in my life. And thank God that this person stopped talking to me. They left my life. And I cannot tell you how blissful it's been. I've been able to invite these beautiful, spiritual, uh, just solid, loyal people in my life the way I am. So I think my journey to getting a good best friend, not just a best friend, but a good best friend was for me to uh, be best friends with this um, damaged person that was constantly pulling me back into their dungeon and I had to pull myself out of their dungeon. So I am very, very grateful that I was able to do that. Oh, did I ever tell you that uh, we made a trip to San Diego and uh, uh, this person, we were in a non-smoking room uh, and this person, while I was in the shower, started smoking in the room and the credit card, of course, it was my credit card and it was under my name. I was there to he- to headline a show that night uh, and I took this person along with me. Um, and while I'm in the bathroom, this person was smoking in the room. And of course, somebody in the na- in the, the, the people next door smelled it, called the manager. The manager comes up and literally kicked us out of the fucking hotel. I have never been kicked out of a hotel in my life, ever. And I've done some crazy stuff in the hotel rooms. Never been kicked out of a hotel room, ever. Actually, that's not true. I've never done crazy shit in a hotel room. I wish I did. I need to start doing that. Yeah, I got kicked out of a hotel room. And not to mention, got hit with a, you got it, $250 cleaning fee. Yeah. Uh, Lost a hotel room, had to headline a show, and got dinged $250. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Guys, if this is any, uh, if a messenger or PSA for any one of you, if you are in a friendship like that, Get rid of that person. They are not your friend. They are not your friend. They are detriment to your to your growth. They're detriment to your health. They're detriment to your safety. They're detriment to your fucking bank account. Fucking get rid of those people. And that's what I did. And I'm very, very grateful. Uh, I think this person tries to come into back into my life. I'm like, mm-hmm, no. Once it's like I don't lick my spit back. Once I spit it out, I spit it out. And that's what I'm doing. Harsh, maybe. Truthful, absolutely. I'm very proud of that. Um I know um, we're getting coming close to an end, but I I do I would have checked I would have checked on you every minute. You're so sweet, Tim. Tim, can I just you know what, Tim? I think you might be my new best friend, my friend. I don't know where you're located. Where do you live, Tim? I think you're my new best friend. Um, but uh, yeah, I have had people like that in my life, and now I have learned to um, get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Uh, between Aurelio and the crazy crazy bestie. No more. No more destructive people in your life. No more tolerating bullshit people. No more tolerating toxic people. Get rid of them. Invite and make space for beautiful people. Make space for good people. Make space for loyal, spiritual, kind, compassionate, caring people in your life. And uh, my life is so much better for that. So thank God for that. Uh, They say you can't choose your family. That is true. Um, I get a little nervous every time somebody is like, come here, we treat you like family. I'm like, you mean treat me like shit and abandon me? No, thanks. I don't want to, I don't want to be treated like family. I want to be treated like dear friends. That's how I want to be. I want to be treated like an awesome best friend. That's how I want to be treated as, uh, they say you can't choose your family, which is true. East coast, oh, it's state of Delaware. All right, Tim. East coast represent. I'm a New Yorker. So what's up? Uh, wow, it's uh, 9.49 for you there. And look at you, committed, watching this. I appreciate you, Tim. I appreciate you a lot. Um, they say you can't choose your family. It's true, but you can't choose your friends. So choose wisely, guys. Choose good friends. It's National BFF Day. Uh, some of you guys told me who if you guys have a BFF and some of you don't. Tim, do you have a best friend? James, what about you? Do you have a best friend? I don't know who else is on here. Um, I don't know if you guys have a best friend. I would love to hear it. Uh, but it's National BFF Day. Call up your best friend. Tell them you love them. You know what? Tell them you love them. Uh, 
tell them that it's, uh, you know, that you are grateful to have them in your life. Um, I called up my bestie today and told them that nothing but love and loyalty. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about, Tim. That's the real jam right there. Um, I don't know why there aren't a lot of songs about best friends. There should be. I really think there should be a lot of uh, songs with best friends in them. Um, but um, guys, I'm going to start wrapping up. I'm going to do this. I'm doing a 30 day challenge. So we started today. Woo. We almost, we've almost made it. Yes. Yes. I didn't fall apart or run out of shit to say. This is great. Um, very excited. Uh, and uh, I'm going to do this every day from 6 to 8 p.m. LA time, uh, which is uh, 9 p.m. Uh, East Coast time. Um, but I'm going to be here and I'm going to be taking on a new topic every single day talking to you guys. And, uh, I'm very, very, uh, happy to be here. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow, 6 PM LA time. Call your best friend, tell them you love them. If you have a, uh, human best friend, great. If you have a doggy best friend, I have also a doggy best friend and I think you should meet her. Hey, Bubba, come here. Bubba Lou. My dog is sleeping. She's got the life, dude. If anybody's got the life, it's my kid. She's got the life. Hey, Bubba, come here. Hey, come here. I think you guys should meet my dog. This is Baba Lou. Hey, Baba, say hello. Hello, my name is Baba Lou. I'm a five-year-old pit bull. Nice to see you too, Tim. This is my Baba Lou. Baba Lou is a five-year-old pit bull. She's a rescue. And uh, Baba loves to do cuddles, and uh, Baba is always trying to steal my food because she is spoiled, and she knows that uh, she is definitely one of my best friends. Uh, and uh, I love you, Baba. You're one of my best friends. Uh, she's very sweet. I know. Isn't she the best? Baba is a rescue. Baba was – this is a true story about Baba. Bab, I call her ba Baba Lou. Is a, I call her short for Baba. Baba was – uh, two years old, she was being, uh, Baba's a rescue. Baba was being, uh, br you know, basically was a breeding dog. She's had 18 puppies. Look at this Kate Moss face. Look at this model, supermodel face. How could you possibly have 18 babies? I didn't even have one, and I look like I've been pregnant with twins. It's the pandemic weight. Don't blame me. Um, Baba's a very sweet kid, and she's one of my one of my favorite doggies, one of my favorite best friends. I love her and she protects me. I love you guys. Tell your best friend you love them. Give them a call. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 6 p.m. Love you guys. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're on YouTube, go and subscribe to the channel. Just so you guys know also before I leave. Um, Monday and Tuesday, today and tomorrow, I'm going to do this on Facebook Live too. And then come on starting Wednesday. This is going to be exclusively on YouTube. So please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. I love you guys. See you all soon. Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye.